Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about my week four tight end rankings for the 2020 fantasy football season. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about my top 16 tight end rankings. Again, usually what we do is we talk about top 12 tight ends, but like I mentioned last week, as the weeks have progressed thus far through 2020, there are more and more viable tight ends that I want to talk to you guys about and kind of give you guys a little bit of my perspective and the stats that give me a little bit more confidence in playing some of these guys. So we'll talk about our top 16 tight ends. Before we get into that, of course, we'll talk about matchups at the tight end position, which defenses are giving up the most points to opposing tight ends thus far this season in half PPR scoring format. Again, yes, all of my rankings are half PPR based. Uh, but again, don't forget, rankings are subject to change. Information that comes out now, an injury could occur, uh, a trade could occur, something, you know, COVID-19 could occur, and players could be knocked out. So don't forget, rankings are subject to change. We will have a stream 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time Sunday morning to talk about some updated rankings if it needs to be done. Outside of that, for those of you who are trying to stay up to date on my latest content outside of the YouTube channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Andrew Kirkhoff, private community Discord server, you know, answering unlimited questions, whether it's dynasty related, trade related, waiver wire related. Uh, we have ourselves a weekly waiver wire, um, you know, Discord community talk. Um, you know, I try to, you know, get as much involved with you guys as possible. We're going to have a watch along today with the Denver versus Jets game. As brutal as it's going to be to watch, uh, that's what we're doing over there on Patreon. Uh, so for those of you who are interested, you can check that out. The description uh, has all the information regarding that. Also, timestamps down in the description. Again, thank you everybody for supporting the channel. We're almost there at 28,000 subs. We can try to get there, get over the hump. Outside of that, um, I do appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're making fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2020 season. Make sure you click that like button. And let's get into week four's tight end rankings. Again, I'm not including anybody on the Tennessee Titans and or the Steelers because that game has been postponed. If you want to hear more thoughts on that and, and the precedent that the NFL has set and my thought process on it going forward, you can go check out uh, the information that I kind of divulged uh, in my quarterback video in the beginning of the video. Outside of that, let's talk about some matchups at the tight end position going into week four. As of this current moment in time, the New Orleans Saints are giving up the most points to opposing quarterbacks thus far this season on a weekly basis and a half PPR scoring format on average. Now, the New Orleans Saints, they've been gashed in the last couple of weeks. I mean, just this past week, uh, Robert Tanyan was able to get them, you know, get himself pretty involved. Got a little bit of Mercedes Lewis here and there. But regardless, the New Orleans Saints have definitely been struggling. So that kind of gives a pretty good matchup for potentially TJ Hawkinson to step up this week. We'll talk about him later in the video. The Atlanta Falcons have been struggling. Speaking of Robert Tanyan, he has a potential of stepping up this week uh, and maybe once again reclaiming himself as the number one tight end in this team. The Jacksonville Jaguars have been struggling. Maybe Drew Sample can step up. The Cleveland Browns playing against Dalton Schultz and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens struggling against the tight end position. Of course, you know, you know, <laughs> I, I would say that Travis Kelsey had himself a pretty good game last week. But maybe Logan Thomas with all those targets can maybe deliver finally, uh, even though he just was completely hidden and is still a hidden gem going forward. Um, either way, just to kind of give you some context as to which defenses are giving up a lot of points to opposing tight ends in terms of thus far this season. We're going to go ahead and move on and talk about some of the tougher matchups as of right now. The Indianapolis Colts, San Francisco 49ers, Miami Dolphins, Seattle Seahawks. These are teams that aren't really giving up much to tight ends as of this current moment in time. This doesn't bode well for players like potentially Jimmy Graham or even Zach Ertz or even, you know, um, Mike Jasicki playing against Seattle. These are tougher matchups. Just be mentally prepared for if, in fact, they do not play well. It is based on the coverage of the matchup. Uh, but I think there are some of these players that we could rely upon going into this week. Again, this week, we're not going to have Jonu Smith and or Eric Ebron. Two guys that, in my opinion, would have been in the top 12 this upcoming week because, again, the Tennessee Titans have been giving up, on average, a touchdown per game to opposing tight ends for the last two years. Uh, and Jonu Smith against uh, Pittsburgh, again, he's been getting nearly 30% of their target share in that offense. Has been fantastic. Touchdown upside's always been there. But without those two, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about 16 tight ends that I feel confident about this upcoming week. Starting off with our number one, Travis Kelsey. Again, Travis Kelsey should typically be the number one tight end that I talk about every single week. If in fact he's number one, or you know, one, two, or three, it doesn't really matter. You're starting him regardless because, again, he's one of the best, if not the best tight end in the National Football League as it currently stands. Sure, um, his stats could be better. But last week, he played out of his mind. I mean, anytime that we can find Travis Kelsey putting him, you know, putting up pretty good numbers in terms of targets, yards, receptions, great. Last week, six receptions on seven targets, 87 receiving yards. Those are numbers that we'd like to see. Obviously, we want to see upsides of touchdowns. That is always going to be the thing that's eluding him. But again, if he's going to put up those numbers, that's perfectly fine. Last week, with only those numbers, only receptions and yards, 
he still finished as a top eight tight end in fantasy. That just kind of shows you or kind of gives you a little bit of perspective as how, you know, volatile the position is at this current moment in time. But if you're trying to find consistency there, that's Travis Kelsey on a weekly basis. He's my number one. Uh, Mark Andrews is number two. And boy, did Mark Andrews not play well last week. I mean, he was an absolute mess, but it also was in relation to the fact that he was dropping a couple passes. But again, Lamar Jackson was not playing well either. Nick Boyle down in the red zone was able to catch himself a touchdown. Um, Pretty much stealing Mark Andrews' potential there. Mark Andrews wasn't even on the field for that play. Um, so that in itself, kind of scary. Mark Andrews doesn't play a lot. I mean, even if you watch a Baltimore Ravens game, you're only going to see him play maybe 30 to 40% of the offensive snaps on a weekly basis because he is a receiving threat. When he's on the field, he's going to be targeted, but he can't be dropping receiving touchdowns like he did last week. Literally hits his hands. He's falling to the ground, bounces off his hands, off his chest. That cannot happen. That's a 10-point swing there in fantasy uh, that I guarantee you this week, he's not going to make the mistake of. He will be scoring this week, and he's my number two tight end. Moving on to number three, George Kittle. Should be healthy. I know it's Nick Mullins, a quarterback, but like I mentioned last week, Nick Mullins loves to use the tight end position. Going back to 2018 with George Kittle, George Kittle had a record season, and the back end of the season was averaging 15 fantasy points per game in the back end because of Nick Mullins and that combination between the two of them. I think George Kittle this week, healthy, ready to go, with Jordan Reed on the IR, Ross Dwelly not really a huge proponent of this offense. I think with Kittle back, with Debo still out, with Garoppolo still out, with Raheem Mostert still out, they're going to ask Kittle to be able to step up against this Philadelphia defense. And I expect him to be um, you know, on the return and having himself deliver some fantasy performances this week that a lot of us can be proud of. Uh, because again, he's missed two weeks here. And uh, that in itself has been pretty rough on many of us, but hopefully he can come back with a vengeance. We move on to number three. Speaking of this matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles, we have ourselves Zach Ertz with Dallas Goddard on the IR at this moment in time. Zach Ertz seems to be the number one receiving option of this team. I know it's a tough matchup, but regardless, is Carson Wentz going to really throw the ball to Greg Ward more than he's going to throw the ball to Zach Ertz? There's a possibility of that, but I doubt it. I think Zach Ertz is going to be streamlined. I think they have to get him open as much as they possibly can. Whether you line him up out wide and do you know one-on-one coverage, it doesn't matter. Use him like he's Darren Waller. The way that the, the Las Vegas Raiders use Darren Waller, he's all over the field. Move him around the formation, get him open, get him into one-on-one matchups, and just continue to feed him the ball. Give a little bit of confidence to Carson Wentz in that form of just getting him a little bit of rhythm with uh, Zach Ertz. That's what I'm hoping we're going to see this week against San Francisco. Uh, either way, Zach Ertz, the only tight end on that team healthy as of right now, should be a pretty good play this week uh, regardless of the matchup. We move on to playing Mr. Darren Waller. Like I just mentioned, Darren Waller's moved around the match. I mean, moved around the field a lot. He plays in the slot, out wide, um, in the backfield. Doesn't matter. They're going to move him around. They're going to find a spot to get him open. Darren Waller last week played against Bill Belichick. It's not easy to play Bill Belichick. Uh, Travis Kelsey's going to have himself a little bit of a tough time because, again, Bill Belichick loves to lock down tight ends. That being said, he plays against the Buffalo Bills this week. Buffalo, not the greatest defense in terms of stopping the tight end position. But again, they got some pretty good coverage. Linebackers, Milano, Edmonds. Um, I think Darren Waller is definitely going to be up against it. But again, with the fact that this team is probably going to be missing Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs, uh, and their only two receiving options being Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller, Darren Waller is going to be asked to do a lot. Hopefully, he'll have himself double-digit tar- targets this week and uh, get himself more involved than he was last week. Because again, he is a huge part of the team's success going forward. That's why I expect him to have himself a little bit of a bounce back game here in week four. We have ourselves TJ Hawkinson as number six. TJ Hawkinson's kind of been um, low-key, you know, consistent as of the last couple weeks. He's pretty much been putting up nine, eight, seven points per week as of the last couple weeks, mainly because of the fact that Kenny Galladay has missed time. Even with Kenny Galladay coming back last week, still got himself seven targets, four receptions for 53 receiving yards. Now, he hasn't scored a touchdown since week one. Um, and hopefully we can go ahead and shift the ties this upcoming week because, again, the New Orleans Saints are giving up the most points to opposing tight ends. And as of this moment in time, if TJ Hawkinson is ready to get going, I think there's going to be a little bit of a shootout between these two teams. That's why I have you know Matthew Stafford within my top 16 quarterbacks because regardless of what Galladay and or uh, the running game is going to be able to do Marvin Jones, I think Hawkinson is in a very, very uh, advantageous position again. When we talk about Darren Waller and what Darren Waller was able to do against that defense a couple weeks back, they could not stop him to save their lives. And they literally were getting dragged down the field by Darren Waller. Um, We've seen George Kittle drag that defense down the field back in 2019. TJ Hawkinson, it's time to, you know, jump into the upper echelon of tight ends. This is the week you establish yourself as such. Hopefully he gets the job done. He's my number six. We talk about Noah Fenton, number seven. 
one of TJ Hawkinson's former college teammates. Noah Fant has been fantastic. He's a top three fantasy tight end thus far this season. And even with the quarterback changes, has still been a relevant part of this offense. In fact, this past week had 10 targets. I mean, that number is incredible. His targets are continuing to creep up. In the first two weeks, he scored a touchdown in each of those two weeks. Had a two-point conversion in week two. Had himself some pretty big games this past week. Even though the numbers weren't there, the opportunity was there. 10 targets, 5 receptions, 46 yards. If the targets are going to increase, you're going to play against the Jets tonight, Thursday night football. I expect, regardless of the quarterback play, um, no offense, going to step up, be the number one receiving option of this team, uh, and have himself a pretty good week here in a Pat Shermer offense that in which they always like to pass the ball to the tight end position. Fant should be great going forward. We have ourselves number eight, Hunter Henry. Again, I think I've mentioned it earlier this week with the context of you're playing against Tampa Bay's defense. Tampa Bay in the past has been susceptible to tight ends having themselves pretty good games against them. And we've already seen it thus far this season. But that being said, Hunter Henry is number, the, probably the number three receiving option in this team behind Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. He is the number three option. If, in fact, his defense is not able to run the ball, they're going to be forced to pass the ball even more. That is going to give Hunter Henry even more opportunity in this game. I think as of this current moment in time, he's going to have to stay on the field, whether he's chip blocking and then leaking out for a route. He's always going to be there to protect and then also have the option of being one of these receiving uh, threats on this team. The number three, in my opinion, in terms of targets. Uh, so as of right now, I have a lot of confidence to the potential of Hunter Henry this week. Should be a pretty good play as my number eight. We move on to Hen- uh, sorry Tyler Higby as number nine. Higby's been a little bit inconsistent. He, you know, he shows up for one week, doesn't do much. Then he has three touchdowns the following week. Then he goes back to being you know a disappearing ghost. As of right now, I, I think about Tyler Higby, what his potential is. Of course, playing against the New York Giants, it's a pretty good matchup. He could easily score down in the red zone. Another one of these guys that's getting a lot of red zone targets uh, amongst the field. But as of right now, I'm not 100% confident in him throwing him in there uh, You know, above the guys I've mentioned prior. Um, I, I think he still has a lot of potential. I think the targets will eventually go into his direction as the season progresses. Uh, but as of right now, uh, sitting at number nine, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with putting him there any higher. And I would have been uh, you know, risking it for the biscuit. So as of right now, Tyler Higby number nine. Uh, the stats, it, it, I mean, the targets have got to go up. We're looking for touchdown upside this week because he's not getting late 2019 kind of target numbers. We're not seeing seven to ten targets. We're seeing, you know, four to five targets per week. And that in itself is not going to be enough to make him a sustainably relevant tight end every single week. We're going to see a lot of volatility uh, and a lot of it based on their red zone presence. We move on to number 10, Mike Jasicki. I talk about the potential matchup between the Seattle Seahawks and the Miami Dolphins being a shootout. Uh, I talked about it all week long. Both these teams have great wide receivers, quarterbacks. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. But Mike Jasicki is a huge part of this offense. Regardless of the fact that the Seattle Seahawks have been playing tough against opposing tight ends, I don't know if Jamal Williams is going to be playing this week. He's dealing with a groin injury. That being said, if in fact he is out, there's going to be another safety trying to cover Mike Jasicki. Jasicki is a huge part of this offense. Again, we saw a couple weeks back, Had himself 11 targets, 8 receptions for over 100 yards receiving and a touchdown. Just this past week, got himself more involved in the red zone. Could have had two receiving touchdowns against Jacksonville. He's catching the eye of Ryan Fitzpatrick. And if they get down there this week, which they should multiple times, just think he's going to be a really good red zone option going forward. We have ourselves Dalton Schultz at number 11. Uh, The Cleveland Browns, again, another one of these teams that are giving up the most points to the opposing tight end position. Though Blake Jarwin is out for the season, Dalton Schultz has kind of found himself a pretty good spot within this offense, having himself a big game against Atlanta uh, in week two, over 100 receive or sorry, close to 100 receiving yards. Um, you know, having himself a pretty good amount of receptions uh, and a pretty good game there. This past week against Seattle wasn't the greatest game, but he saw opportunity: six targets, five receptions. The numbers are going to continue to pile up for Dalton Schultz in this upcoming week. I think again, if in fact this team is just going to pass the ball as much as they have. And play against Cleveland, who has been struggling heavily against the pass. I think Dalton Schultz could have himself a pretty good step-up game here as my number 11. We move on to number 12, Hayden Hurst. Now, Hayden Hurst's value, in my opinion, as of this current moment in time, is going to be based on the fact that Russell Gage is probably going to miss with the concussion. And if Julio Jones misses, they need Hayden Hurst to step up. So, outside of Calvin Ridley, the only guarantee is Hayden Hurst this week. He scored a touchdown early in last week's game. Then after that, disappeared. We got to get him more involved. I'm sure the team wants to do so. I, I'm sure that Derek Cutter wants to get his tight ends more involved. So I think we'll see more of Hayden Hurst. We'll see more opportunity for him as the weeks progress. Um, but as of right now, 
this upcoming week against Green Bay in a shootout potentially, uh, Hayden Hurst is going to be asked to do a lot. And I think he'll be a pretty good top 12 prospect. Moving on to our number 13, we have ourselves Evan Ingram. Now, Evan Ingram's kind of disappeared this season. You know, typically we think about Evan Ingram and his potential of getting injured, but he's just completely disappeared along with the Giants offense and Daniel Jones. Uh, with Saquon Barkley going out, they really haven't been able to at least have consistent drives offensively. They cannot move the ball on the ground. It is forcing uh, this offensive line to have to protect first, second downs. Daniel Jones, again, is still an inexperienced quarterback. They've been struggling heavily. And though, and it, it has been affecting Evan Ingram, I expect Evan Ingram to eventually be the number one receiving target of this team. Uh, with Darius Slayton probably uh, getting Ramsey coverage this week and Golden Tate probably getting a couple grabs here and there, it's going to be up to Evan Ingram to at least step up and maybe have himself a pretty good game here. Um, I think it's a little bit of a toss-up on whether or not he plays and performs well. But again, I think this 13 through 16 range are all guys that are going to be up against some pretty good competition, and it's going to be tough for them. But it's all a matter of targets, opportunity, and potential touchdown upside, especially for the tight end position. We move on to number 14, Jimmy Graham. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, the matchup against the Colts is definitely difficult, but Jimmy Graham with Nick Foles could definitely jump into this top 12 conversation from here on out. He's had two pretty good games thus far this season, but both of them have been touchdown dependent. Last week, of course, two receiving touchdowns is going to make you the number one tight end on the week. But Jimmy Graham, are you going to get 10 targets, eight targets in a given week? Are you going to have the opportunity to produce on a weekly basis? That is what we're going to see as the weeks progress. I'm going to leave him at number 14 this week, even though I could start him in specific situations. I think as of right now, I kind of want to sit, watch, see what he's capable of doing, and then proceed from there on. Uh, but again, he had himself a fantastic game this past week. Uh, 10 targets, 6 receptions, 60 yards, and a rece- sorry, two receiving touchdowns, uh, both in the red zone. Big body target, one-on-one on the outside. Really easy for Jimmy Graham. It's a guy that a couple years back, 10 touchdowns with the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, could definitely, again, you know, kind of reclaim that dominance this upcoming season. If they're on the right path, you know, on the right path with uh, with Nick Foles at quarterback. Moving on to Logan Thomas, number fifteen. I talked about Logan Thomas last week as a hidden gem. Uh, he's kind of disappeared as of late, but Logan Thomas has been getting targets. That has not been his issue. It's a matter of Dwayne Haskin giving him actual worthy, you know, worthy targets. Can you? determine if that target was even worth anything if it was 10 yards over his head if it was in the ground if it was batted down what's the point as of right now logan thomas still getting about nine targets eight targets per game on average those numbers are going to continue to creep up eventually he's going to have himself good games here um you know only catching 50 percent of the targets is not great especially for the tight end position but again i think this upcoming week Maybe we could find some garbage time against the Baltimore Ravens in which Logan Thomas finds himself in the end zone uh, and scoring himself some fantasy points there. Uh, Our last option is Austin Hooper. I want to throw out Austin Hooper because, again, in a matchup against the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas has not been playing well in their secondary. And if, in fact, Baker has to throw the ball, Baker tries to throw the ball at at all costs away from OBJ and Jarvis Landry. He's almost allergic to passing them the ball more than 10 times a game. He'll find a way to find Austin Hooper in the end zone. I know he's looked at him. A couple times already this season uh, in the red zone, got himself a pretty good amount of uh, red zone targets. But uh, as the weeks progress, I think Austin Hooper could find himself uh, as a relevant tight end. Hopefully this week, maybe one of those options. Either way, those are my top 16 tight ends on the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you click that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to be making 2020 content here on the daily for the entirety of the season. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Enjoy tonight's game. I know it's going to be a little bit of a rough one between the Jets and the Broncos. As of this moment in time, I don't know who's going to win. I'm assuming the Broncos are the better team. But if, in fact, the Jets come out and somehow surprise everybody with the victory, I'm not going to be surprised. So uh, as of right now, I'm going to guess that the Broncos win. But last time I checked, I think uh, in terms of um, Vegas betting odds, somehow the Jets are the favorite now. If they fired uh, Adam Gase after this game, I'll be so happy. So honestly, I'm hoping the Denver Broncos win so that they have to fire Adam Gase so we can actually get some fantasy production out of that uh, Jets offense. Regardless, thank you everybody for watching. Um, Tomorrow, Hidden Gems. After that, Sunday morning, 8 a.m., 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Kickoff with Kirkoff. I'll see you guys then. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. See you guys. Peace.